Hey guys, subscribe for daily content. And if you're shopping for gear, make sure you check out the description for the newest items at some of the very best online retailers. There's also links for some of the items that I personally recommend. Thanks. What's going on YouTube? Metal Complex here. And today I've got a very interesting knife review slash knife overview to show with you guys. This is the SOG Pentagon OTF. Uh, a lot of talk about this thing right now. Um, I'm going to speed through the specs and all that stuff because I really want to talk about this. I believe this is available. I will link it right down below if you guys want to check that link out for yourselves for whatever reason. It's down there. Uh, thanks so much to Leith for sending this in for review. I really appreciate that. Thanks to my generous patrons who are supporting me. There's a link for Patreon right down below. And please make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. All right. So the overall length of the SOG Pentagon OTF is coming in at about nine inches. Uh, blade length about 3.75 inches and your cutting edge at 3.6, 3.65. Just a couple of size comparisons today up against the Ontario Rap Model 1, the Ontario Rap Model 2. You can see it's definitely a big knife. How about up against the Spyderco Para 3? There you go. And last but not least, the Benchmade Bug Out. I think that'll probably give people a good enough idea of size. Thickness. <clears throat> it is actually fairly thick. Not crazy, but it's definitely going to be noticeable, right? So there you go, up against the Spyderco Para 3. Length and height, up against the PM2 and Para 3. You can see here, it's definitely a little longer than the PM2. Not nearly as tall, but it's also definitely thicker. The handle material on this guy is aluminum. Then we have a steel switch, and then we definitely have some steel support. Uh, blade material is uh, Cryo CPM S35EN, which is that the cryo thing doesn't hold much weight. I wouldn't put too much stock into that. S35VN. Uh, let's go ahead and weigh it. Feels pretty heavy. I'm going to say probably six ounces. Come on now. Probably six ounces. Oof. Six and a half ounces. <laughs> Yikes. Um, but, you know, okay. Uh, I definitely have carried knives the same, you know, heft before and been okay. It just depends on what you like to carry. Um, let's go ahead and measure blade stock thickness. I feel like the blade is pretty thin. Mm, yeah. 110 thousandths or so feels right. I don't know if I was grabbing it at exactly the right spot. Let's try again. It's hard because it's a dagger. Maybe, maybe a little bit less. It's somewhere in there. Uh, if you check, it's hard with this guy because the flat is like, look at this. That's what I'm trying to grab onto, that little teeny tiny spot right there. So uh, you can check out the specs down in the description by clicking on the link for this knife and it should tell you the exact blade stock thickness. Um, let's go ahead and do a hardware check, get out my tools as per usual. My tools are very inexpensive and very recommendable. You can find them right down in the description where it talks about the tools I use on this channel. Why do I always, I always grab for that team? There we go. I make the labels on them correct. Uh, T6. I believe all of these are T6. Hey, you know what? It's better than having proprietary hardware or no way into it at all. I think all of the screws, including the pocket clip screws, they're all, they're all T6. Curiously, there's no, well, no, that is, that's, it doesn't matter. This is, this can be mounted, right? If you're left-handed, you just put it in the left hand, probably it's going to be the exact same experience, right? Pull it right-handed. There's your switch on this side. You're left-handed, pull it because the pocket clip's now out here. Right, so there you go. It doesn't have to have a mounting position on the other side. It's the nice thing about a face switch OTF like this. Okay, um, did we do everything? I think so. Let's go ahead and talk about this knife. So if you don't know, this is an OTF that is boasting um, no blade play. Now, despite what you'll hear um, by uh, you know uh, overly proud Benchmade infidel owners. <laughs> who <laughs> claim that their infidels have no blade play. They do. Um, or they're Microtechs, right? Um, I own lots of Microtechs that I have definitely paid way too much money for. They all have blade play, right? Even if it's just a little bit. Click, 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 click. This has the least blade play of, and I have handled a lot of OTFs. <laughs> the way that I label my videos will make it you know, real easy. You can type in Metal Complex OTF and it'll bring up a ton of videos. Right, but I have personally handled way more than that. Uh, I mean, the, the, not necessarily like I've handled so many OTFs. I'm sure a lot, a lot of people who are heavily invested in the knife world have. Right, so we kind of know. Right, the Benchmade Infidel has a lot of blade play. 
Uh, Microtex, Guardian Tacticals, that's eh, it's minimal, but it's there. Not that big of a deal. Lots of other, you know, Junker OTFs, Lightning, some other things. They, they've got quite a bit of blade play. This has almost no blade play, and I mean almost nothing. It's very, very solid. Impressive, because I really thought, no way, right? Depending on how it locks up, in some cases, it actually feels like it has basically zero. It's like 99.9%. .9%. There is only one OTF on the planet, well, you know, OTF design model. That's not even the right word, because there's different models. The Hawk Deadlock is a 1000 to $1,500, depending on which base model, between the, B well, they're on the C now. Let's, let's say the Model C, right? Because that's the one that they're producing. Uh, that's, that's it. That the only one that has truly zero blade play. Again, you're going to have people claiming that's just people do that on the internet. Uh, but no, uh, if you, if you trust my word, I'm telling you the only one that really doesn't have any blade play is the Hawk deadlock, but that's a grand, right? So this is a $350 OTF that's boasting basically no blade play. It, it does almost achieve that. It, I can get it to move just a little bit. The Hawk Deadlock, no matter how hard I wrench on that blade, which I'm really not willing to wrench on it too hard because it's a blade. Um, but uh, yeah, moving this about the same, just a teeny, I mean, it's a hair of, I can just barely feel it clicking. Pretty impressive. There's a couple of problems though. Uh, many of you probably have already read the reviews on this. Maybe you've watched some other video reviews. Um, we'll talk about that. Uh, the firing switch feels great. It's actually really easy to deploy. And I love the face switch. I love it way more. When I pull this knife, and uh, listen, reviewing this as somebody who's reviewing a tool. I understand people want to talk about tactical speed and advantage. No, that's not what I do here. I don't care. Never have, never will. As far as pulling it from my pocket, the way that my hand is positioned right when I pull like this, my thumb is already on the right side. I'm not talking about for speed, right? Opening up that Amazon package with lightning fast reflexes. No, just convenience. I don't have to reposition. Pull, my thumb's right there, right? It's nice, not that big of a deal, but it's nice. Um, very easy, I mean, you can sort of, like if you wanna fire it and you wanna put your finger like right in the middle of this, which I think is how it's designed, you can do that. If you wanna put it way back here, you can do that, right? It's just, it's real nice. It's also very comfortable, the way that it's, you know, set up here. The pocket clip is not a big deal. Uh, the ergonomic lines are nice. You can get right up behind the blade if you want to. It's not the best, not the most comfortable if you're gonna choke up, but you absolutely can. Uh, there's plenty of a guard if you're holding it back here, I think where you're supposed to, but you're quite off, uh, quite a ways off from the cutting edge. The action feels all right. It feels fairly snappy. Uh, it does not feel nearly as powerful as um, like a Microtech Scarab uh, 2 or a Microtech Combat Troodon or the Guardian Tactical series knives. Uh, it definitely feels more powerful than an Infidel. I'm sorry. I'm never going to let up on the Infidel. I just, it's, it feels horribly underpowered and it's just like this rickety old wobbly thing. Um, yeah, I mean, it definitely feels more solid and more snappy than the Benchmade Infidel. There's a lot of cling, cling, you know, almost like it's firing through chain link mail. There's a lot of noise. And I, I you know, it's the first time I heard that, I thought, oh, it's going to be real rattly. No, nope. for a second it is. Let's see if I can get it to. First, now it's not wanting to do it. I could not figure out what was happening, where it felt like everything was all loosey goosey, and then all of a sudden it was super tight. Um, you see this space right here? Let's see if I can capture it. As soon as you deploy this blade, that space gets filled with this little, you know, three dimensional. The rectangle or a cube and it and then see it, it went it slid back down in the place because I let go of the switch I'll show it again right so see now it's gone and now the space is occupied by this thing right here and then you let go of the switch and it slides down which I think is the piece of material that is responsible for the solidity on lockout and I think that 
piece of material sliding into position and also the the room in the chassis on the inside where the blade actually comes out. I don't think it's actually very solid in there. I think it's got quite a bit of room for such a thin blade and the blade's kind of going, blah, 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 you know, as it comes out. So it makes in some situations a lot of noise. There's another indicator that that's what's happening and we'll talk about that. But that's kind of neat how they do that. It sort of deploys this little cube <laughs> that holds the blade in place. And it does a good job. I really, I, I think I could probably cut pretty hard with this. Um, OTFs in general, OTF designs, you know, people always assume that they're incredibly fragile. Uh, most OTFs, they lock out relatively similar. Even this guy with that extra little cube thing, I guarantee it locks out relatively the same way as your, you know, your uh, Microtex and your Infidels and all that. Uh, they're actually plenty strong. You can watch uh, X-Ring on YouTube demonstrate exactly how durable uh, OTF locks are um, if you want to do that. But um, yeah, I mean, it feels pretty good. I'm going to be honest with you guys. This thing has never misfired. I've actually been firing it multiple times just in this review. It's not misfiring. Seeing a lot of reports of misfiring. Lots and lots and lots. So that's kind of a bummer. Seems like a lot of people, a lot of, sometimes when I, you know, if it's just one person shouting into the void, it's like, well, you know, maybe if, if I hear a couple of people, I'm like, oh, well, maybe it's a fluke. But you start hearing this, it's like every other person that talks about a model, you know, then it kind of makes me believe. So maybe, maybe a lot of them have issues with, um, you know, successful deployments. And I, this, you know, the, the one I'm holding is just one that doesn't have that issue. Just beware. Apparently people are experiencing issues with deployments where it does not deploy all the way. And then you have to reset the blade. So, yeah, um, I do like how the blade looks. It's definitely really skinny, right? Compared to the handle. Um, so that's going to bother some people. It doesn't really bother me that much. Um, it's kind of like an ultra tech blade on like a combat troodon body. In fact, it might be a good idea just so you, you know, people who are watching this because they're just really big into OTFs. I have a whole bunch of OTFs in my collection. I might as well just put them, uh, get them out here so you guys can take a look and see. Here it is up against the Microtech ultra tech. Here it is up against the, um, Microtech Scarab 2. So it's definitely not quite as big as the Scarab 2. Here it is up against a Combat Troodon. Also not quite as big as the Combat Troodon. And the other big boy, uh, the Recon 40 is definitely not as big as the Recon 40. Um, the, that, that thing is just a tank. But there you go. Now you've seen it up against some other OTFs. Um, so yeah, action is a little bit clangy, apparently kind of unreliable. It's interesting how the thing locks out. The blade, uh, the, this fuller, what I like is that it actually does go right down the center and then it looks like the way that it's ground is actually symmetrical, which is nice because you don't always get that with these knives. I've definitely seen some infidels and unfortunately some Microtex where the line does not go right down the middle and it's really obnoxious. The grinds on either side are okay. Um... Yeah, they're okay. It's not, they're not perfectly even, but they're all right. It's not too bad. There's a bit of a, you can see how they've sharpened it back here. It kind of comes back on the, it's, that's kind of awkward to look at, right? Um, it's pretty thick behind the, even with it not being a super thick blade stock, they just don't have much room to drop down towards the sharpened edge. So it will cut. Don't expect it to like laser beam through material, right? Uh, nice puncture tip. Obviously, I mean, it's dagger ground. It's another thing to keep in mind. This is an OTF. It's a switchblade. For some reason, some people think that switchblades and OTFs are different things. An OTF is just a type of switchblade. It is absolutely a switchblade. No question about it. Um, and it's also, in this case, a dagger ground switchblade with a pretty large blade, right? This is going to be quadruple illegal in some way. The firing, the type of knife, the dagger edge, and the blade length. It's going to be triple illegal um, in some places. So, yeah, use your best judgment there. I mean, it's your judgment, but use your best judgment. Here's the biggest issue with a knife. Um, so, I had noticed that there were these areas where it had felt like there was some rolling and or some chipping going on. We've got bump. So... 
it's, well, let's see if I, I doubt it'll catch it on camera, but where my fingernail wants to, you know, it feels glassy smooth, glassy smooth. Oh, we're gonna, got some turbulence, turbulence, smooth, that eh, turbulence, turbulence, oh, big turbulence. It got caught quite a bit right there, and then smooth down to the edge. On this side, smooth, 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 oh, turbulence right there. And the rest of it's pretty good, right? So it's about in the middle. Uh, initially, I thought, well, um, it's probably just from the, uh, uh, you know, from usage, general usage, right? No, actually, there's a part in the owner's note where he says um, it was just from opening and closing it. What's happening is that as it's opening and closing, this is why I think the room where the, the blade has in the, the chassis to move around is just too much room because it's coming out like this. <laughs> It's just banging into the sides of this, um, and uh, it's it's grinding the blade down on, on the inside, which is just, ah, no. It should never, the edge should never contact any part of the knife on the way out, right? Nowhere near, it, this, these areas right here, underneath the blade, they need to be wider so that the blade doesn't come, and the, the internals, right? It needs to be, it needs to be holding the blade tighter so it's coming out straight. Um, but there's actually, let me disengage it here. You can see there's actually a spot. So here you can see how it's, how much it can move left and right. Look at this. The blade can be moved all the way over and contact that on the way out, which means as it's coming out, it, it can do that, right? So that's not good. Um, apparently this is an issue that almost everybody is having with this knife. The blade bangs into the side and dulls itself on the way out. That's just, that's terrible. This, this needs to be, uh, it needs to be fixed. I like how it looks. I love that somebody has figured out a way to, you know, that, that SOG has figured out a way to like lock this blade out almost a hundred percent. Like honestly, acceptable. It's pretty impressive, right? Um, I, I love that. I think it's cool. I love the face switch and honestly, the whole design to me is pretty attractive. The pocket clip position, it just needs to be deeper. I have no idea why they're like, well, let's put it all the way down here so you have this. It's not necessarily shallow carry, it's just like, why? Just go all the way, right? Um, but yeah, good looking design. It's got some nice um, diamond pattern texturing here. Just feels good to hang on to. It's fun to play with, right? Like I said, this one's not misfiring. But um, the fact that it's <laughs> just rubbing against the sides, no. And here's the other thing. Uh, S35VN, I have no problem with that. It's one of my favorite blade steels ever. Um, the aluminum and steel, I don't have an issue with that either. Obviously, I mean, that's kind of what we're looking at with Microtex and stuff, right? Here's its. Uh, here's a competitor right here. Another great competitor would be like, I mean, the, the Guardian Tactical Recon 40 is like 380 bucks. It's only 30 bucks more than this guy at 350. These, um... Microtech Ultratex are 290. The Guardian Tactical Recon 35, which is probably the best all around OTF in existence, is like 285, maybe 280. Uh, why is this 350? And also, um, no, because it the blade rubs on the way out. Doesn't make any sense. If you're gonna charge 350 bucks for this, you would, uh, you would better make sure that that blade comes out without damaging itself because it, then you just have a kind of, you know, a spike. <laughs> it's not very sharp, right? Um, no, that's totally unacceptable. I think that this has potential. There needs to be a Pentagon 2 that needs to be overhauled. Um, absolutely. Love the idea. You know, if they're going to they're gonna hold tight with that $350 price tag, fine, but bring it. Uh, seriously, like it needs to be, the, if you're going to do that and, and you're going to say like, you know, don't buy a Microtech Ultratech, buy the SOG Pentagon. Okay. Um, then it needs to be perfect. It, it, it absolutely does. Um, these are to the best of my knowledge, I believe made in the United States, right? So that's, that's cool. Um, I, I appreciate that. Absolutely. I just really, I'm sorry. I'm looking at the packaging on here to make sure that that's actually the case. Um, but, um, uh, yeah, in any case, um, yeah, bring the, bring the quality, right? At $350, bring the quality. Obviously in this, in its current form, no, this is catastrophic failure. You know, there's no like, but you know, if you really liked it, don't buy this. 
telling you. I have a link down there in the description. And the way that it works is if you click on that and then you buy this knife, I actually get a, a kickback. Don't do that. Don't buy it. <laughs> buy, buy, buy the Recon 35, the Recon 40, or the Microtech Ultratech, or check out some of the stuff in Heretic's line, which is also pretty, I always forget about them, also pretty competitive. Not this guy. Looking forward to a Pentagon V2 with these issues fixed as it sits. Not recommendable at all. It's too bad because I was really, uh, had a high hopes for this thing. Um, thanks again to Leith for sending this in. Really appreciate that. Please make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like. If you'd like to check out my other content, I do of course have lots of videos of knives that are either expensive or inexpensive that I do or don't like, so check those out. And if you enjoy all my content, go ahead and click on that Metal Complex logo right there and subscribe because there's definitely more coming. Thanks again for watching, everybody, and have a great day.